you know I want to title this video not another surface grinder uh, because YouTube already has many many videos on doing surface grinders for 2 by 72 inch belt grinders uh, this is my belt grinder this is the TW90 belt grinder by Travis uh, Wirtz and I've had it a number of years and just yesterday I finished this build I've been working on it for a few weeks and you know here and there in between other projects and I wanted to, and I'll try and make this short, but I wanted to do my own video, kind of introducing you to what I came up with, because this is a little unique. I'm sure some other guys have, have done something similar out there, but this is what I've come up with. This is, I've got an 18 inch permanent magnetic chuck here, okay? All designed in Fusion 360, everything made in-house. So my goal with, with this grinder was to have a grinder that operated in, in Y here, okay? So as this machine, as this grinder is going, all of the, all the grinding dust is going out the back of the machine. Now this, this is called the TW90 for a reason. This, this grinding will, will tilt up, okay? And if I had this going down, right, or at an angle, all of that dust would be going into my shop. And I didn't want to do that. So that's why I did it this way. It's a pretty simple design. I've got this 18 inch permanent magnetic chuck uh, fixed to this guide rail, okay, which goes over these five roller bearings. Uh, th these roller bearings are mounted to this X or, or Y positioning table, you could call it that, and then to, to some other um, aluminum, which fixes straight into uh, the the built-in TW90 receiving hitch. What also makes this build unique, besides the fact that I have it running in this direction to direct the you know the debris that way, is that I am using my grinder's original contact wheel. I did not purchase a new contact wheel and hardware i'm using the original contact wheel that i have on this machine and you know with this quick adjust um, rod with this handle i can just pull this out like so the the chuck runs on these bearings i can get this closer or farther from from the wheel using this positioning knob like so now here's a quick piece of scrap that I surface ground as a test. Now the first thing I had to do once I had this mounted on the machine is I had to seat this bed. Okay, I wanted to make sure that, that this was, you know, parallel to the surface of this grinding wheel or, or that they matched, if that makes sense. All right, so I could get somewhat accurate uh, grinds on this. Now, I do have some experience with precision surface grinders that have, you know, um, electromagnetic chucks. And, you know, there are a lot of things that this has in common with those, but it, it's never going to have the precision that a real machine is going to have. And that's okay. I understand that. You know, um, but as a test, I... I, I ground this block. Now, one thing I will say is this chuck is somewhat powerful. You kind of have to be careful. Um, it is not, it is strong, but I wouldn't say that it is, is as strong as a, an electromagnetic chuck or as the chucks that I've used in the past. And that might be just my design. I think, however, with, if I, and even on a really good chuck, you're gonna you're gonna place your material right, and then you'll have a a block behind this material to to give it a little extra uh, strength so it won't slide. But this is completely adequate with uh, very light depths of cut. I think this is completely adequate. Now I did a quick um, once over on either side with a 60 grit belt, and this in each direction is measuring within one thousandth of an inch. Um, and that's pretty good. I mean, that's good enough. That's better than I expected. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. And I, 
I admit that as depending on how I use it and over time, I think that that'll only get worse. Another thing that I've remarked is it, it, it also makes a difference where, you know, where one places this work. And I think for me, since these, these are epoxied in with clear 15 minute epoxy, I think it's going to make a difference where I put this. If I have it here, okay, forward in this, in this chuck, as that hot grinding dust is going to come off and it's going to sit on here. It'll be attracted to these magnets. And if it's hot enough, it'll actually burn this epoxy. And my epoxy is a little bit burned there. So I think in the, in the future, well, two things. I'm going to position this closer to the rear of this chuck as I use it. Also having another piece of, of shallow, shallower stock behind it to keep it from sliding as much. Take that off. And then number two, I'm going to run coolant. Now I, I ran it with and without coolant when I was, when I was uh, grinding this yesterday. And it is much, much, much better with coolant. The, the coolant makes a huge difference. I didn't have the heat issues that I did without the coolant. So this is the left side of the machine. And you can see... I've got a little magnetic base. Okay, this is one of those $20, $30 jobbies off Amazon that I've already been using on this, this grinder. And I've got the, the nozzle pointed in underneath that belt. Okay, it's behind the wheel and under that belt. And, you know, I'll keep playing with it, but I found that that did a, a really good job keeping the work cool. On my grinder, I have this, this receiver here with this quick release knob. It's, easy, it's really easy to change out my tools. And this grinder, I've got the contact wheel, the flat platen, and this small wheel attachment. And now, of course, I have my own homemade surface grinder. This, this handle is made out of just common aluminum. I knurled the end and then turned down this ba basically until I liked the way it fit in my hand. And there was about, boy, I don't know, four and a quarter, four and a half inches of space there. Just enough for my hand to fit naturally. All right, guys, I've moved into my office in my house so we could take a look at Fusion 360. And this is, well, the surface grinder, completely modeled in Fusion 360, minus these pockets here, of course. I ended up not milling those. That was, that was an idea I had. Um, but yeah, doing it this way was very advantageous, okay? Because I wanted to make sure that when, that this chuck was directly beneath this contact wheel so basically what i did was i came into the house with the contact wheel just brought it in here and i modeled it in fusion 360 took as good as measurements as i could and made my own model of the wheel okay and then i just basically <laughs> i designed it on the fly like what do i want how is this going to work? And I just designed it in pieces. Okay. So this next part you see here. Uh, I knew I needed this arm. I knew I was going to need this drop bracket. And it needed to be long enough so I had enough room to actually put parts on the chuck. Okay. I knew I was going to need this this adjustment table okay and this this is how i did it basically i brought it all into here and then did all of my tool path thing here in fusion 360 and milled most of it except for uh, this this table here i bought that off of ebay this adjustment table i actually went onto ebay 
and using their pictures and their diagrams, I drew my own Chuck or drew my own uh, x-axis platform. That's what I've labeled it here. And it worked out perfectly. Their, their pictures were, were, were right on right on the money. I didn't actually know that this x-axis platform even existed, um, nor had I sourced this guide rail until I had watched a really good YouTube video. For a long time, I was sitting on the fence about building one of these surface grinders until I watched a YouTube video by Tyrell Knifeworks. And I'll put the link in the description. And the way he laid it out made a lot of sense to me. It wasn't exactly like this build, but what, what it did do is it let it sourced some of these parts for me. Like this I bought on e eBay and this guide rail. He had a link for that where he bought it. And uh, yeah, again, Tyrell Knifeworks, that YouTube channel was a uh, it was a great video and I've watched a few of, of his other videos so I definitely recommend that you give his you probably already watch his channel but check out his channel it's pretty cool so again Fusion 360 is really great for projects like this because I was able to model the entire thing once again in Fusion 360 and then do all of my machining on my Sile X7 now I had several uh, operations f for this magnetic chuck because you know I, I have a very small working envelope my working envelope is more like 12 inches uh, by 12 inches not 18 inches long so I did a couple uh, different setups you know I, I, I had a WCS front and left here did half of it flipped it and then did the then did the other half and that worked perfectly and it was right on the money and a lot quicker I used a, a contour toolpath since this was full width of the cutter and I don't have flood coolant. I actually rigged up a cool mist, a homemade cool mist uh, system to run this. But because I didn't have uh, flood coolant, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. So running full width of cut at half a millimeter depth of cut, I just tore through this uh, magnetic chuck and it made quick work. And that was followed up with a contour, contour tool path to clean up the sides to get to my final width of cut so that I could put in these permanent magnets. These other parts were much the same. Uh, the rest of the parts were mostly just uh, spot drill and tap. Maybe some counter bore in there to, to allow for some hardware, like on this support arm, for example. It was a through, I drilled all the way through and then counterboard for M8 bolts. Probably my most aggressive uh, milling of aluminum was I pocketed some recesses in here. The end mill that I was using, the three flute, three eighths end mill, it only had a, a reach of one inch. So just to take some weight out of this chuck, it's, you know, it's a big chunk of aluminum, two by two by 18. So going back into the shop, let's take a look at how we put this or how I put this together. These are all M6 bolts that I used for everything except for the bracket that, that uh, screws to the tool post. This is an M M6. I had to enlarge the holes on this on this slide just a little bit and then dress the, the screws and the bolts that I used. But in general, it was a good fit. And all the semi-permanent uh, fixtures here, I used a little red goo to make it tighter. This is a closed foam piece of rubber that I've held captive with an M8 bolt. And then I threaded in reverse um, a lock nut on that to hold the threat the, and not crush the foam, but then still be able to tighten this handle to this slide. And then these are three M8 threads that I use to secure these two pieces together. And now why three and not two? I don't know. I'm just having fun. I wanted three, so I did three. That's kind of how I roll. 
Two would probably be just plenty though. And you'll notice here I've used, there are a lot of different holes uh, that you could use uh, on this table, this exposition, exposition table, that sounds weird, but I used uh, these four and they fit perfectly. The drawing in Fusion 360 and then, yeah, everything fit well. And then here you'll notice a little indecision on <laughs> which direction is this supposed to go? Um, but it was, I ended up taking it off immediately and then flipping it back the other direction. And the, the point being, you know, as force is pushed down onto the magnetic chuck, I wanted it to be as evenly distributed and get as little de uh, deflection as possible. I'm gonna get deflection on this, especially if I take a, a heavy cut. It's it's hard to not take a heavy cut on this. It, it, uh, it, it screws fairly, adjusts fairly aggressively. But uh, yeah, feeds in very well. And you can see how fast this feeds. So I've got to get, I've got to be really careful or put on a bigger knob so that it'll feed more slowly. You can see in the, in the up direction there is give, in the down direction it seems firm. So I've got, a top, I've got a little bit of epoxy. I'm gonna skim this epoxy off until I get a clean grind across all of the aluminum. And I'm doing this as little as possible. I'm leaving the epoxy on top of these magnets and I did that on purpose. I've used these magnets in the past and as soon as you damage the surface or grind, grind on them, they seem to stop working. And here's just a, a cut off chunk from an old project I'm going to test out. And I've got it fairly forward in this chuck. Now if I do this chuck again, I might make it a shorter piece, but if I do this check again, it's not going to be 18 inches. It'll be four, it'll probably be half that. I think this is a little excessive. It'd be nice to have two, one of each size. And right now I'm grinding without any kind of uh, coolant or cool mist. And it's, it's getting pretty hot, so I'm going to dunk it in some water and, and keep going. This is too big of a, of a cut there. Really easy to do, I'm still getting used to it. And now I've got a little bit of cool mist on here. A little bit better than water, safe for the environment or so they say, but it really, uh, it, helped the, it helped the cut quite a bit actually. I thought it, I thought it uh, ground a little bit better. And of course, the proof is when you when you pull it off, how does it feel? And when I pull, pulled it off, it, it felt considerably cooler. I could handle it just fine. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Hopefully, you got something out of it. I know I'm going to get something out of this. This is something that I've needed a long, a long time in the shop. And uh, I'm going to get some good work out of this. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.